Good morning. Welcome. Um, my name is Libby, and alongside my husband Julian, who you saw earlier, we're the senior pastors here at Sutton Vineyard. Um, if you're a guest this morning, um, either to celebrate with um, Serena or um, if, you're, if you've just come along with someone today, you are so welcome. We are so, so happy you're here. Um, baptisms really are one of my favorite services um, as we get to celebrate with those being baptized, their decision to follow Jesus and make him Lord of their life. Um, and for me, that's where I get really, really excited. So this morning, before we do baptize Serena, um, I'd love to spend a little bit of time explaining why we do baptisms and how the symbolic act we're witnessing this morning is something that each of us, wherever we are on our faith journey, um, can, be, um, re can reflect on, as well as celebrating with Serena. We'll be focusing on Romans 6, verses 3 to 4 this morning. Um, so if you've got your Bibles, that's where to turn to. Um, but before we do, let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunities that we have to follow you. We thank you this morning for um, Serena and her decision to be baptised. We welcome you in this place. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's dive straight in um, and read Romans 6, 3 to 4 together. It says this, Don't you know that, those, that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. The words of Paul here speak to the very heart of our baptism service this morning. Um, as we see, witness the baptism later, and we see the promise and the declaration that she's made Jesus Lord of her life um, and her personal saviour. In a few moments, we'll look a little bit closer together about what baptism means and symbolises to us. But I also want to invite the rest of us in the room today to explore what it means to live a life fully immersed in Christ every single day. Have you ever been totally obsessed with something? Like totally obsessed? Um, I can remember when I was younger being totally obsessed with some of my favourite bands. Um, my two favourites happen to be McFly and Busted. Any other fans in the room? Um, I, I think my first, the first band I was obsessed with was Busted. Um, I had the posters, the magazines, um, I had the albums. I couldn't get enough of listening to them. Um, when they broke up, my goodness, it broke my little heart. It was three days before my ninth birthday. Not that, not that I'm bitter in any way, shape or form. Um, but they were so inconsiderate. Um, <laughs> I mean, have you ever been totally obsessed with something? Maybe a band, maybe a football team. We've got Dave in the room who's obsessed with Liverpool. Those that don't support Liverpool. Oh, there's a few booze in the room. Uh, <laughs> um, or perhaps um, a seasonal hot drink you can only get at Christmas, like those gingerbread hot chocolates. Um, when it comes to Jesus, though, he is so much more than just a fad or an obsession. He's the way that our Heavenly Father revealed himself to us. Our immersion in Christ is about our love for him and sharing in everything that he's promised to us. Imagine for a moment a life totally immersed in Christ, where every thought, action, every part of your life is entwined with his presence. A life that goes beyond a surface level Christianity, a life that goes beyond the rituals and the routines of religion. It's about understanding what it means to truly be baptised into Jesus' death and to be buried with him. So then what does it mean to have our lives entirely immersed in Christ? What does it mean to be so connected to him that his life becomes our life? Where his purpose becomes our purpose and his love becomes the driving force behind everything that we do? It's a few questions I'd love for us to think about together this morning. So what is baptism? Baptism can mean different things to you depending on what tradition of church you might have experience of, or if you have no experience of church at all, you might not have a clue what we're doing here this morning. Um, some traditions of church baptise infants and have um, confirmation services when they've made their own decision to follow Jesus. Um, here at Sutton Vineyard, we dedicate babies to welcome them into the church family, um, and we promise to play our part in helping raise that child into the Christian community. We here at Sutton Vineyard baptise teenagers and adults because we believe that baptism is a public declaration of the decision they have made to follow Jesus. 
Baptism is a one-time public declaration of devotion to Jesus. And it's a public testimony of faith. It's an outward sign of an inward truth, something that um, has been a decision made inwardly. We've put aside our old life without Jesus and decided to trust and follow him. It's something that someone decides to do when they've already decided to follow Jesus and they've put their faith in him. When we baptize someone, they identify with Jesus in the three incredible acts that he did for us that make a way for us to be reconciled and reunited with God. Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul writes that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day. Later this morning, when Serena's baptized, we get to see these three acts symbolized. The first thing that will happen is Serena will go into the water. Um, In Romans 6, 3, it says... Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Jesus died on the cross so that we could be free, that we could have freedom from sin and shame, that we could be restored. In being baptized, we're saying in effect that we've died to the old sin in our lives. We're choosing to be obedient to God. Not that we are perfect by any means, but that Jesus' death paid the price for where we fall short. Then Serena will get under the water Romans um, goes on to say, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. The moment under the water, which you'll be relieved to know is only a moment and not three days like Jesus, um, (laughs) is symbolic of how we regard our past life without Jesus as being over. Um, How we are forgiven for any wrongs we've done. It's, It's not that our past life goes away, but rather that it's redeemed and made new through Jesus. And then... Um, Serena will definitely come out of the water, um, and that symbolizes the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus didn't stay dead, but by the power of God, he was raised back to life. As Serena comes out of the water later this morning, um, it's a symbolic of the new distinctive life that she now has in Jesus. So definitely a reason to celebrate. Baptism is an important marker in our journey of faith. But it doesn't make us Christians or act as membership of the church. We baptize people who have already decided to follow Jesus and call themselves Christians and have made this church their home. As the next step in doing something that Jesus told us all to do. Baptism is an important and sacred yet single step in our ongoing pursuit of faith. We continually pursue Jesus throughout our lives. I fondly remember my own baptism 17 years ago. It was an important market in my life and something that was really significant to me and a public declaration of my decision to follow Jesus. But that wasn't the only marker in my journey of faith. Our journey of faith is lifelong and we pursue Jesus throughout our entire lives. Our prayer here at Sutton Vineyard for everyone who decides to get baptised is that you'll continue to grow and thrive in your faith and grow closer to Jesus every day. Our commitment to Jesus goes far beyond baptism. In our relationship with God, we recognize that we have a responsibility to pursue Jesus, to follow him. While baptism is essential, it's only the beginning. The commitment to follow Christ extends beyond it. In any relationship, in any friendship, it requires both people to actively pursue that relationship for it to work. Relationships don't work well if only one person is doing all the work. To follow Jesus is to be totally immersed in his presence. To seek him and intentionally and actively seek to grow in our faith and draw closer to him. Our relationship with God requires us to spend time with him, get to know him more. Whilst baptism is something we often do near the start of our faith journey, of our de- to show our declaration of following Jesus... It also marks a commitment to participate in a lifelong relationship with our God. For those of us this morning who are already baptised, I'd encourage you to consider how we seek the presence of God every day in our lives. The importance of this seeking can't be minimised. We need to pursue Jesus with intentionality and devotion, a wholehearted desire to know him better. Not because we have to, but because we really, truly want to. The incredible thing about our God 
is that um, as we seek to draw closer to him, he draws near to us. It's his grace and his love that sets the foundation for our relationship. The reality is for each one of you here today that he has always been reaching out and seeking you. That's why Jesus was sent way before anyone in this room was born. He has been drawing near to us and reaching out to us our entire lives. Have we and will we respond to his continuous invitation to know him more? Baptism and literal immersion in water is something we do once to mark our decision to follow Jesus. But we are constantly and intentionally seeking to be forever immersed in Jesus' presence. This morning is another opportunity. The reality is that every moment really is an opportunity to draw near to him and immerse ourselves in his presence and his love. His presence isn't just a nice atmosphere or a pleasant place to exist. It really is transformative. I believe that God has designed and created us to be in his presence, to draw close to him. When I think about being in the presence of God, sometimes I get a picture of this cold, dark winter's night and drawing close to an open fire, wrapped in a blanket, hot chocolate in hand. There's something enticing and irresistible about the presence of God. In God's presence, we find his transformative power, his supernatural peace and joy, and connection with him that our souls yearn for. The peace isn't a superficial peace or a manufactured peace. It isn't brushing our emotions under the carpet or pretending that everything's okay, but rather in the middle of those moments and seasons of pain and grief, we can experience his peace in the middle of all of that. His presence is an anchor for us, in the middle of the sea, whether calm and settled or raging and uncertain, his presence is an anchor for us that's unshakable. When we immerse ourselves in the presence of God, we allow our hearts to be shaped by him. He transforms and shapes us. We experience his transforming love because he loves us so much. And he's given us his gift of mercy and grace. I find that when I'm in his presence, I'm grounded, that my focus is brought back to the truth. I mean, one of the areas in my own life, and I think we all have areas like this, that I have to be really intentional about overcoming sometimes, is the thoughts I have about myself and how I view myself. Um, But I've found that when I spend more time in his presence, I pay more attention to his truth over my life. That I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and loved unconditionally. The stuff that I know, the stuff that we read in the Bible and um, become, goes from being this head knowledge to really being heart knowledge when we spend time in his presence. And if I forget or get distracted from spending time with him and being in his presence, that's the moment usually where I lose focus on what he says to and about me. One of the incredible things about God's presence is that we can be immersed in his presence anywhere, at any time. It's not confined to a Sunday or a service or a location. We, can be immer- we absolutely can be immersed in his presence at these times, and we want to be. But we have unlimited access to our Heavenly Father. There are no data caps in spending time with God. He's always with us, always available, always speaking, and always listening to us. Psalm 1611 says this, You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. This psalm was written by David, and if you know anything about David, his life was full of extreme highs and extreme lows. His life was full of turmoil, but yet in God's presence, David found himself filled with joy. The presence of God we experience is such a powerful expression of the kingdom of God breaking into the world. Matthew 6, 33, Jesus instructs us to prioritize the kingdom of God in our lives. He said to his followers, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Um, talking there about the provision of God to meet our needs. When Jesus says to seek the kingdom, he's asking us to align ourselves with God. Spend time with God. The kingdom of God is a present reality that God is sovereign and working in our lives here today. 
When we seek his kingdom and his presence, we experience his love and his care for each one of us. When we seek the kingdom of God and put Jesus at the center of our lives, we don't make that decision once, but we make the decision each and every day. Following Jesus is lifelong. This morning, I'm so excited that we get to baptize Serena. It's an incredible moment to celebrate with her. But for each of us who's decided to follow Jesus, it's a reminder too that we need to make a decision today to keep Jesus at the center. When I married Julian, I made a commitment to him to love him and be faithful to him. But if the only time that I thought about or remembered that decision was the wedding day, something would be seriously wrong. If we got married but never spent any time together, never went on a date, that would be a red flag, right? When we follow Jesus, we need to remember our commitment to him, spend time in his presence, seeking the kingdom of God, because that is how we get to know him more and experience his hope, peace, and purpose. But the kingdom isn't just for, for me, isn't just for a single person, or even just a few people. The kingdom is a community of people with a shared sense of identity. We can't have a kingdom on our own. We need each other as a community of Jesus followers to encourage each other, share stories of the incredible things that God is, has done and supporting each other. Um, yesterday at Flourish, um, quite a few of the women in the room, we had a wonderful time together in the presence of God. One of the moments that really stood out to me was a moment where I was sat on a table with some women and we were talking through some of the really hard circumstances that we faced and have only got through because of the support of a community and the love of God. Does anything hold you back from entering into his presence and seeking his kingdom? I used to think that I needed to have it all together to be in his presence. Probably because if we were going to be in the presence of an earthly king or someone that we hold in high esteem, I would be expected to at least have a pretense of being sorted um, and worthy of their time, right? You'd put your best clothes on. You'd make sure you'd got yourself sorted and presentable. But you know, God welcomes us as we are. The good bits, the bits we'd rather not show him. And he embraces us even in all of that mess. So what hinders you this morning? What might be holding you back from stepping deeper into God's presence? For some of you, you might not feel ready to know, or you might know Jesus, but if you're honest, taking faith for granted a little bit. Just as Serena will be immersed physically as a declaration of following Jesus, we too can be immersed in the presence of God this morning. Let's remove the distractions and seek the kingdom of God in our lives. Allow our hearts to be transformed and experience his supernatural peace, the hope and joy in our lives that he gives us. Just as I immersed myself in the musical world of Busted when I was eight years old, obsessed with hearing more of their music and knowing as much about them as I possibly could, probably bordering on an eight-year-old stalker, to be honest, um, my prayer for each of us is that we would be more captivated by Jesus than that that we would be more captivated by Jesus than anything else, that we would immerse ourselves in his presence this morning and focus on him. May we listen to his voice and know him better every day. Psalm 27 verse 8 says this, My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Lord, may we continually seek the face of Jesus, his presence and his kingdom. Holy Spirit, come, be present with us today. Amen.